Hi, and welcome to this month's edition of Inside OPSU. I'm Danae Moore, the Campus Communications Director at Panhandle State, and today we're at Pickle Creek Event Center in Guymon, and we have a special treat. We're at the annual Paul Farrell Art Auction. We're going to meet some of the artists and check out their artwork. Sit back and enjoy. is Brian Test. It's so nice to have you. Thank you for making Thank time you, to speak with us tonight. It's a pretty special night. It's a pretty special night tonight. It really is. We're really excited about it. Uh, a lot of buzz around the community. Uh, a lot of great things happening here. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the history. I'm sure we have lots of viewers who are pretty familiar with the art auction. We probably have those that don't know a lot about it. Can you tell us how it got started and that type of okay. thing? Okay. Um, the concept behind the auction originally happened because as we were beginning to develop this department, we would go out and recruit students and we would work so hard to bring them in only to lose kids due to financial issues. Right. And there was nothing we could do. We had no art scholarships, nothing we could do to help those kids. And so uh, it was getting really frustrating for me. To, to spend that time to do that and then to lose those kids. So just thinking, what can we do to make this happen? And we thought, well, we're different than the math department or science. We actually have a product we can produce. Right. And I had worked with some other auctions, not necessarily art auctions, but fundraisers. And so we began to put this together as a way to help save some of those kids from dropping out. So it basically serves as a fundraiser, right? It is a fundraiser or for I our should, scholarship fund. Yes. I should say that's one of the purposes because I know we've talked a bit about many of the different ways that it's beneficial to the students. It, it absolutely is. Um, it's such an educational thing. My art marketing class is actually in charge of making this thing happen. And we go everything from the very basics of event planning to actually putting this together. And they were here yesterday from 9 o'clock in the morning till about 9 o'clock last night uh, getting this venue ready to go. I know I've been working with some of the students in your class just on press releases. Yes getting the word out to the community so they know how to get tickets, who's going to be playing, what, who the featured guests are, things like that. Absolutely. And then I walk in today and it's gorgeous. It looks well, beautiful. You. So they have done a ton of work they getting it all put awesome. together. They worked so hard making this happen yesterday. And it's such a learning experience for them because they have to work as a team and they have to learn how to listen to other people's ideas. And then once you have an idea, how do you execute it? What, what is the process from this abstract concept to this reality? And I teach them that this process is very similar to a piece of art. You come up with the concept, you come up with the design, and then you get into the middle of the thing where you just want to scream at it. And then when it's all finished, here's this beautiful piece of art like you see out there tonight. Exactly. And it was so funny to listen to him talk about, oh, we see what you mean. And tonight I said, oh, 
this piece of art isn't finished, the signature will be tonight. So. And I'm sure you feel that it's one of those things where you can tell them about it in the classroom, but until it's actually hands-on and real, and they're the ones actually, I guess, in the hot seat doing it. Absolutely. They, then they really get a feel of it, and it's something that's going to benefit them a lot later on, especially as artists, As right? an artist, so it really can will. they market yes. their product. Yes, and so many times as an artist, especially in the beginning, you have to do wear so many hats, you better know how to put on an art event because if one gets put on, it may be up to you in the beginning. So That's yeah. right. And this is the 18th year for this, this number event. This is number 18. I'm 18. sure you've seen lots of changes throughout oh. the year. And you're pleased yes. to have it where it's come to now in the attendance. Absolutely. The first one we had, we had it in the Family Enrichment Center at the Methodist Church when it was brand new. And it was one of those things where we were really lucky. We had a lot of parents and a few patrons show up. And I remember Paul and Linda Hitch bought a whole lot of art that night that they really just didn't need, but they were so supportive and bought that art. And went from that little quaint gathering to we'll have close to 500 people in this room tonight and I've had people trying to get tickets all day long that I don't have so and that makes me think of another thing you had talked to me about what it's like for your students to have that experience of meeting people who are potentially absolutely. interested in their artwork absolutely and that's one of the things that we of course we teach them about the basics of marketing demographics who you're looking for and getting them from that time when they're leaving high school as a kid and taking them to the point that they're an adult and they know how to function in an adult world. So yeah, it's it's uh, quite a process. I love that they get the hands-on experience. I know that's something we talk about a lot with Panhandle State, where it is a smaller school. They're able to work one-on-one -on -one with you and get actual hands-on experience. It's not just up on a screen taking notes, something yes. like that. They're actually out learning how to do what they're going to need to do when they have a yeah, start their that, career. That's the thing that's so nice about this event is we come in, we have X amount of dollars to work with, we have so many things we have to do with that money. How do we put all that together so that they're working on something that's real and not just out of a textbook? And then they get to come in here and they get to see the final product. And this is what we talked about and this is what happened. Right. That has to be very rewarding. I would it's imagine amazing. this yes, will be a is. special night for all of them. It will be. It one, will be. One other thing I'm curious about, as you look across the room, there's so many beautiful art pieces. How do you choose those? We have a jury process that we go through the first Wednesday of December every year. And the kids submit work to it. And we look, at, we look at a lot of things. The first thing we're looking for is quality, but we also look for the marketability of the piece. Uh, we really want, when the kids come here and they show their art to be the very best that we can show the community as to what we're doing. Right. And so there are a lot, a lot goes into those decisions. We had uh, about 300 pieces submitted this year, and we picked, uh, I think about 35 wow. for the actual auction and then we picked uh, we had a different jury for the silent auction and they're all miniature pieces and I think we had about a hundred pieces submitted for that and we picked 20 so so it's quite an honor to get yes. to display your work yes it is that's awesome well let's switch gears a little bit and talk about you as an artist I know I read your bio before we mm -hmm. came here your Facebook page for the Paul Farrell art auction looked awesome and it was well, very you. informative and it was really neat to get to go through and learn a little bit about mm -hmm. each of the artists that are going to be highlighted mm -hmm. and one thing I did want to bring out there it's not just students Obviously, no. this painting right here, you did yourself. Yes, this was, yes I did this So piece. we have alumni, faculty. And students. And students. Yes. All, we'll see lots of different artwork then. Yes, yes we will. All right, let's talk a little bit about you as an artist. Do you want to just tell us a little bit about your career as an artist? Maybe well, how you got started. I, I can tell you that uh, uh, I say in my other life, before Panhandle State, I was a professional artist. And... I actually was fortunate enough to win a lot of national awards in painting and in the, the wildlife art genre. And at that time, duck stamps were a really big thing. The contests were 
extremely competitive and very lucrative, mm -hmm. and I was fortunate enough to win some of those. And then in uh, 1994, we lost my oldest daughter to an asthma attack, and I couldn't paint anymore. It was just, my hands would shake so bad I couldn't do it. And through time there, um, I was fortunate enough to know Finn and Valois Ramon. Mm -hmm. They were good friends of mine, and Valois called me one day and she said, you need to get to that college. There's a position open for an art teacher. They need an art teacher. And I went in, and um, I'll never forget that day. Um, I was taking some classes um, because I'd been offered a position in Guyman coaching baseball mm -hmm. and teaching art. They were going to create a new ceramics position that my brother now holds. Mm -hmm. And uh, anyway, I went into the secretary's office there, uh, Dr. Miller's office, and I'd never, I hate to say this, I'd never had a real job. I'd always been an artist, and so I went in and asked for a job application, like there was one. <laughs> and the lady that was there was so nice, and, and she said, well, she got to tell me, she said, by the way, who are you? Well, I really didn't want to tell her, because at that time in my life, I was pretty depressed. Uh, I was taking classes, I was in shorts and flip-flops, I hadn't shaved in a couple of days. And I told her who I was, she said, oh, well, Dr. Miller wants to see you. I said, okay, well, let's make an appointment. No, he wants to see you now. <laughs> and I just thought, oh, wow, this gig is up. I thought there's no way he's going to hire me looking like this. But I went in, we talked for about an hour, and he hired me. And so that's how I got to Panhandle State. That's so, awesome. And how many years have you been there now? I think, I think I'm finishing number 24. Is so. there any one highlight that sticks out about your time there? Or there's, oh, I know there's got to be a multiple lot. Multiple things, multiple but. things. It's, it's, all, it's all about the students, you know. So events uh, like this where you can come and yeah. see them kind of make a full circle, start out. It really they is. They go through the whole process yeah. and then show their finished work. Yeah, and then, and then also I've got so many alumni going to be here tonight. And to get to see them as they've moved through their careers and how successful they are. It, it just really is pretty amazing Rewarding. to me. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Okay, tell us about this piece. Uh, this piece is titled First Light. Um, I actually did it last summer. Uh, last summer, I had decided I was going to do an art show. So uh, the year before, Kelly and I went to several different shows to decide, because I hadn't done one of these shows in like 20 years, to decide which one we wanted to do. So. I decided there was a show in Eagle Nest, New Mexico. It was kind of laid back. The sales looked like they were pretty good, but it wasn't too stressful. So I sent my money, and I got to May, and I had zero paintings, nothing. Well, I don't go to a show without 40. So this show was at the end of July, and I needed time to get ready. So I thought, okay, I have to have 40 pieces done by mid-July. And I actually got 42, but wow. this one was done during the middle of all of that, um, I had a lot of fun doing this. It was really hot when I did this painting and it was windy and I used that to my advantage. The sky has probably 60 layers of paint on it. Wow. I would put thin washes down, let it dry, and that's how I got this, this blending of color and uh, where you can see one color through another one. And anyway, I was very happy with how it turned out. It's beautiful. Thank you. Wonderful job. Now, there probably are a lot of reasons why people want to contact you as far as students thinking about attending mm -hmm. school there next year, or maybe somebody who may be interested in having a piece done, mm -hmm. looking at some of the artwork you have for sale. Is that, do you, can, do, can people commission you too? Do I do piece? take limited commissions. It has to be something that, number one, I feel comfortable doing and that I'm interested in. Right. So I don't do just anything, but yeah, I do take some. I have uh, three different galleries that handle my work. Okay. McCreed's in Bennett Springs, Missouri, uh, the All Fired Up in Guyman, and then I've got a place out in Eagle Nest that handles my work out okay. there too. Okay. So what's the best way to contact you if one of our viewers would want to get in touch with you? Uh, they can e email me at the school email address. That's I, that, I respond to that better than anything. Okay. So. That sounds perfect. Is there anything else that you want to add about the auction or? Uh, just thank department? you to so many people. I can't thank everyone because 
it takes such a community to put this on and to make it what it is. So, Well, thank uh, you for all your hard work. Thank We're you. looking forward to an exciting evening. Well, thank you, Dana. is Dakota Johnson. It's so nice to have you, Dakota. It's nice to be here. It's very exciting. It is an awesome evening. It looks gorgeous in here. I know you were a part of the team that put all this together. Yes, Do you want to tell um, us a little bit about how all that worked? Well, um, this uh, yesterday morning, we all met at 9 o'clock in the morning, and um, we just started getting everything ready and getting everything set up. And then we started decorating and getting all the lovely decorations that you see. And we just had a lot of fun doing it too. I mean, it took a while, but it was so fun doing it. So. You had a good team to work with. Right. And part of that is the marketing class that you are in, yes, art marketing with Mr. Test, right? right? Exactly. And we spoke with him a bit about that and he talked how not only do you have to produce the artwork, but you learn how to take it from that point and actually take it through the whole process, market it until you see the finish of it getting sold. So can you highlight something you learned that especially Stuck out, stuck out to you? Yes, definitely. Um, one of the things that really did stick out was learning how to sell myself and make a brand out of myself and learning how to um, deal with um, other people and learning how to uh, make myself a business person besides just being an artist. And um, I learned how to uh, like set my pricing and get myself out there and I've made a art page to get myself a little bit of leverage over some of my classmates. So, so you have already been able to use what you are learning in that class and feel like you're already yes. furthering your career right. while you're still taking classes. Exactly. So let's back up just a little bit. Okay. I know you're originally from Guymon, correct? Yes ma'am. And what classification are you at Panhandle? Is this your second year there? Um, I'm considered a sophomore this year, so yes, I'm a second year. Okay, and what are your future goals? Do you know what um, you One what of you my biggest goals do? is to become an art teacher and have several galleries throughout the United States, like Miss Patterson. Um, she's the one that has taught me for four years at the high school in Guymon, and she's just been the biggest inspiration for me throughout these years, and 
she's the person I should give all my thanks to really tonight. And she's got me to this point that I am today, along with the other professors at the college. college. So did she have a large part of you um, checking out your options at Panhandle State? Yes. I'm sure where you were only 10 miles away, you already knew the reputation for a great art department. Right. So that probably was a pretty natural choice then, I'm assuming, for your step after graduating from high school? Yes, and I just knew automatically this is the place to go. It, it just has a nice community feel to it and everybody up at the art department is just like a big gigantic family and I love all the people there and it's just a fun experience every day and I know I hear students say that a lot that it is just like a giant family is that probably one of the things you would say is your favorite about the art yes, department? Yes ma'am exactly that's one of the things um, that's how I, um, whenever I go to recruit, that's what our, that's the big thing that I express to the high school students, is that they, fit, they can fit in easily with the crew over there. So it was a pretty, pretty smooth adjustment. Are you still taking some of your basic courses mixed in with some art? Uh, yes, ma'am. I still am, and that's, um, with that being. Um, the art classes are what I really look forward to. That's my de-stressor of the day. If I have like a hard class or whatever uh, during the day, that's what I look forward to. And are you taking some education courses as well to yes. help along with the... Um, I am taking an intro to education at the moment and I'm learning how to set up lesson plans uh, for my major and uh, get everything ready for the classroom. Um, I haven't quite figured out if that's my main course I want to go uh, to right away after college, mm -hmm. uh, but I definitely want to uh, get in a few galleries around the local areas and uh, see if I can market myself through them. Very good. Let's talk about you as an artist. How did you get started? Um, I feel like I got started because um, in church, um, whenever I was little, I didn't quite understand the sermons, mm -hmm. so I would always draw on the little envelopes for tithing, and I would just kind of started from there, and then in junior high, I was really big into comic books, so I'd like to draw like superheroes, and I copied the superheroes, and one of my friends really noticed that I stuck out, and she's just like, you should take art classes. She's like, you're really good at it, and I'm like, all right. And it just developed from there. It just blossomed into what it is now. That's very cool. What are some different, like what types of art do you do? Um, I prefer uh, 2D art and my emphasis is in painting. Um, I've tried 3D and that's a whole nother challenge in itself, but I do enjoy it and I would like to do some more, but what I have here, my pieces of uh, painting in acrylic and acrylic is one of my favorite mediums to use. Okay, so it's right back here. Yes. Do you want to talk about it a little bit? What okay. inspired you? Um, my parents uh, went to Colorado over the summertime and they really love nature and they know I love nature so I asked them to take pictures for me and they've gotten several different pictures of like chipmunks and like the steer and a whole bunch of other things and the steer really stuck out to me and I've w always wanted to explore like different textures and techniques and uh, this piece w um, was a challenge for me because it was a lot smaller and I, uh, it's, I like to work bigger and um, I just wanted to practice the fur texture so I can like develop my skill and um, I also uh, practice my uh, like learning the texture with the different foliage I have in the background with the, um, the bushes and uh, the tree branches and like the leaves and everything. And overall, I just had a really fun time doing this. So is this a piece you did during class? Um, I actually did this outside of class and um, I feel like that's where I learned the most. Um, I, I do learn a lot in class, but um, teaching myself um, how to fix the problem whenever something comes up, I feel like that's the best way I can learn. 
So when you are in class, will you do a piece of work and share it with your teacher, get some feedback, and yes. then you can go home and make other adjustments yes. and um, move forward from class, there? Um, in we'll, class, on our due dates, we do have a critique session, and all the classmates uh, give their input on what you can do to make it better, but they're not harsh. So it's pretty fun. So what classes have you taken so far? What what different types of classes have you taken in the um, art department? In the art department, I've taken pastels, I've taken um, painting one and two, I've taken um, ceramics one, and I've taken uh, Yvonne's drawing class. And so you've already yes, had, it, I've had quite a, a variety. Yes. So you really have a pretty good handle on the fact that acrylic is something that you really enjoy the most. Yes, and I'm, I can paint for hours, really. And as an artist, as an art major, you are required to take courses in several different areas, correct? Yes, ma'am. All right, well, it's a beautiful piece and such an honor to be picked to be in the auction. Yes, I was very like thrilled to get picked for this since this is, I've been here before, but I've never gotten a piece in last year. Mm -hmm. So I was really excited. Even if I just have the one, it just means the world that to you me got to do that. Yes, to get did, this experience. Did you ever come as a high school student and check it out? I have I didn't get the chance to, but probably seeing it last year yes. though to think if you were to have a piece selected, that was probably a goal in your mind. Yes, ma'am. When you got to attend if a viewer would like to contact you and work with you on getting a piece of artwork, can they do that? Yes, absolutely. The best way to contact me is uh, either email or through my uh, Facebook page, uh, okay. Whistling Robin Art. Okay. And I respond fairly quickly to the page uh, messages. And on my email, um, my email is uh, Dakota Johnson 397 at Gmail. And I uh, respond fairly quickly to that as well. And it's Whistling Robin Art yes. on Facebook. Yes, ma'am. All right. Well, thank you for your time. Enjoy the evening. It's beautiful. Thank you. Good job. It was good talking to you. Thank you. Thank you. art student at Panhandle State. Go ahead and introduce yourself for us. Hi, my name is Thin Moy and I was born in Burma, Asia, and my family and I immigrated into the United States when I was 10, um, which was 10 years ago. And I'm now a sophomore in Panhandle U University. Uh -huh. So what brought you to Panhandle State? You have an awesome story. Thank you for sharing it with us. How did you find your way to Panhandle State? Well, to be honest, I just, um, Larry and Brian went to our school and they talked a bit more about the arts and stuff. And so I got into it. I was like, hey, this is what I like to do. So I decided to take a, an interest, uh, more my, more, my interest more seriously. Mm -hmm. And so I went into that field. Was that kind of exciting when you thought, wow, I can go into a field that I really have something yeah. that I'm already doing, that I'm excited about? That was probably pretty neat when all that kind of clicked and came together. Definitely. So did you did you graduate from Guyman High School? Yes, I did in 2016. And so that's kind of how you made your connection mm -hmm. and, and then just a smooth move over to Panhandle State. Yes. 
Tell us about yourself as an artist. How did you get started? When did you first know that that's what you wanted to pursue? Um, I never had any um, art classes in in elementary, but um, I took an art class in junior high. It was. It, I didn't really take um, a beginning art class. Mm -hmm. I just practiced and practiced, and then um, I got into it my eighth grade year, and then I just fell in love with it. I wanted to learn more, and so in high school, I I got into it, and I became the, the president of my my senior class, um, the art club president. Wow. Uh, yeah, that's about it in high school. And that's kind of how you got started, and I know you have great teachers at Guymon. Yes, Ms. Christy Patterson is awesome. She's amazing. She taught me a lot of things that I, um, that I, you know, I became as a person in uh, college. I actually knew a lot already. Um, some students in my class didn't really know a lot about art, but uh, me, I, I learned a lot in Brian's class and my other um, art classes but I already knew a lot like shading and sketching great you had a things. good foundation yes. then yes. let's talk about your artwork you actually have three pieces yes, here I do. which is a great honor congratulations thank you do you want to tell us do you want to focus on this one and kind of describe how it came about um we can talk about this one and the other ones too but this one um Brian showed us a demo in class um, how to you know apply the sponge techniques into our paintings and stuff as you can see here um, and he also taught us how to make the sun rays so I apply that into my water and we just he he just the next day he was like okay it's up to you guys to do it now but use the techniques that I taught you in class so I decided to do this piece. It was inspired by Planet Earth because I was watching Planet Earth cool. the night before. So I'm like, hey, I want to do this. So yeah. <laughs> so how do most of your pieces come about? You mentioned how this one was inspired. Mm -hmm. Is it just something that pops into your head and you think, well, well that would be neat? Yes, most of, the, most of the pieces are in class assignments, okay. but they are inspired by other things too, like my bird one. Um, I used to have parakeets and I just miss them. They were. Plus, I love the colors. I love the bright mm -hmm. colors, the and they're so vivid. So I decided to imply that also in here too. So this is an acrylic. Yes. What are your other pieces? They're also in acrylic. Um, is my, that your favorite medium? Yes, then? it is my favorite medium because I make a lot of mistakes, and acrylic can, you know, I can go back and fix it once the paint is dried. If a viewer would like to contact you and work with you on getting a piece made is that possible can they get in touch with you yes um, and what is the best way to do that facebook my phone number or you can just go to college and <laughs> okay and you have um is your artwork on your personal facebook page yes then? it is i have an album but i'm about to make um my art page on facebook I think that's our next assignment. <laughs> okay, very cool. Is there something that you want to highlight about your time at Panhandle State in the art department that has really stuck out, been one of your favorite things? To be honest, I just loved being there because everybody's in there is amazing. It's um, We feel like family, mm -hmm. we're family. Uh, and they help us with anything that we want to do. It doesn't have to be art, it can be math. They can help us out, they will help us out. Everybody is so amazing. It's easy to see you definitely have a passion for what you're doing. I what do. are your future goals? Um, after I graduate from college, uh, I plan on having my own gallery, but I'll have to work first before I get there. Uh, and then either that or I would also like to be a teacher, an art teacher, of course. Yeah, those are the two things that I'm focusing on right now. Okay. Is there anything else that we haven't covered that you'd like to share? No, I think that covers. All right. Well, thank you for your time and enjoy your evening. You did thank a great you. job on your thank piece. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you for having me. Yes, thank you.
Central State art instructor, Brent Shoulders, a familiar face to many. Why don't you tell us a little bit about the art auction? We talked with Brian a little bit about the history, but um, there's something special with the way it's named. Right. And I want you to fill us in on those details. Um, basically what happened, uh, God, and I can't even remember the years, it's kind of, kind of run together. Uh, but there was a, uh, a worker, a local guy, uh, by the name of Paul Farrell, uh, that worked out at Phillips for many, many years. Uh, but during his whole time there, uh, all he did was paint. He painted thousands and thousands of paintings, did tons of drawings. Uh, he was a carpenter. Uh, he built doll houses. I mean, he built a lot of stuff. Just a, an amazingly creative individual, and he kind of used it as his outlet uh, to, to sort of decompress from, from all the anxieties of, of work out at Phillips. Okay. Um, when he retired, uh, of course, that was, that was his love, so that's what he was doing. He just produced art and kept producing, kept producing. Uh, but then he was diagnosed with cancer in one eye. Uh, when they went in, they, they weren't able to save the eye. Uh, so for many artists, depth perception is a huge thing. Uh, and he immediately lost all depth perception. Uh, he was unable to, to, to see the way he formerly did. Uh, so he thought, you know, best best bet was to, to get with someone to see if they could teach him how. So he came to the college and took some art classes with Brian Test uh, to see if he could sort of retrain himself to, mm -hmm. to see in, in depth. Okay. Um, and just one of those kind of guys, he, he had the, uh, uh, the personality that really brightened the room. He, he hardly said anything, but when he did, it were like super tidbits of wisdom uh, and, and a lot of sarcasm. Uh, but just a really fun individual to be around. And uh, whenever he passed away, uh, the students uh, came to the faculty and, and basically they, they asked if we could do something to, to memorialize him. Uh, and that's kind of where the auction began. Uh, so uh, we set up the auction and, and decided to, uh, to name it after Paul. And uh, Miss Margie will be here tonight. She's just a great individual and a lot of fun, a, a big ball of energy. And, uh, it's it's it really is a blessing to be able to do this uh, in his name so that's a pretty neat story I know that it's the 18th year have you been involved in every, every single one, one of them, those yeah. as a as a student and as an instructor yeah. so you've got to see both sides of it then. right right uh, a lot more fun as a student uh, than, it, than it is the instructor but uh, it, it is a lot of fun it's it's really cool to see uh, you know, a, a freshman come in and they submit their artwork and to see the change, uh, not just in their personalities, but in the way that they present themselves from that point on. Uh, they begin to kind of understand the, the value of what they're doing, the value of the education that they're getting. And, it, and it's really, uh, it's, it's that light bulb sort of eureka moment that every instructor wants and we get to see it on this night. So it's, it's a lot it's a of fun. It's a big night. Yeah. Very neat. I want to talk a little bit about your artwork. Those of us that work with you, we know you're talented and can do a crazy amount of different things. I, I like to play. That's can you it. highlight some of the things that you're kind of focusing on right now as far as art goes? Uh, right now, really jumping into anything 3D. Um, and I know that sounds kind of blah, but any, anything 3D. Uh, whether it's you know leatherworking, uh, woodworking, carpentry, knife making, sculpture, uh, ceramics, uh, just about anything. Uh, and talking with our with our guest artist uh, Danielle Robinson, uh, you know we're we're tossing around some ideas of some possibilities uh, at the college now uh, to do some castings and to do some mobile castings, and it's it's going to be kind of an kind of an interesting. Uh, sort of culmination of many many years and, and friendships you know so I'm, I'm looking forward to jumping in and doing anything really tell us a little bit about the pieces that you have in the auction tonight all of it started kind of out of a bet uh, you know one of, one of the ladies <laughs> like in all was, good things yeah, do <laughs> talking about making tamales and I was like oh yeah I want to do that it's something that I always wanted to do I can eat them like nobody's business uh, so uh, the first thing I thought was, well, I need a, a press because I, of course, you two, I'm, I'm right there. I'm like, oh, hey, they're using a press. They're pressing it out. It makes it easy. I don't have to spread it. So I uh, went and bought a press and broke it six tamales in. <laughs> Had to go back to the store, Not good for bought business. a wooden press, and the wooden press was great. It worked so much better than the metal press, but it's so tiny. 
Uh, so I, I just kind of decided I'd make a big one and sort of see if it would be possible to make a uh, shoulders size tamale, uh, a, you know, a little bigger, mm -hmm. a little heftier, uh, a lot of meat, a lot of stuffing <laughs> in it. So, uh, and but that I love, worked? I love to cook. Yeah. Yeah. It, it turned out well. And um, that is, so this is a tamale press? A uh, tortilla press. Yeah. Okay. You can use it for, uh, for corn tortillas or to make just a huge tamale if you want it. Okay. And what else do you have? Uh, the stoneware ceramics, that's, it's all cone tin, high fired ceramics. So uh, it's microwave, dishwasher, oven safe. Um, and something new, this is, this is the first time I've ever done it is a mortar and pestle. Uh, and I, I got to thinking about that. Uh, you know, you've got to have something to grind the, the spices, the seasoning, or making guacamole or salsa. You know, there's nothing, nothing better than having salsa in a mortero. So uh, I grew up next door to the Ortega family. They took me in and that man, I would eat like six meals a day because I didn't dare miss my mom's, but at the same time, I would never miss theirs. <laughs> uh, so I uh, learned a lot about, about Mexican food and absolutely love the flavors, love the smells, everything about it. And uh, it's sort of, this whole piece kind of took me back to, to childhood, you know, in, in that deal. Um, but then thought, well, I got to beef that up a little bit and throw in a cutting board and a knife. Okay, and, cool. Um, so a little just, bit of everything. Yeah, it's it's just a, a and lot it of, sells lot of fun. as a package yep, deal. Yep. So a whole set uh, comes with the uh, the margarita goblets or wine goblets, whatever you want to use them for. A tortilla warmer, uh, the mortar and pestle, some salsa bowls, cutting board, the knife, and the uh, the press. It, it, it was kind of fun. It's uh, using a, a CNC machine, CNC router and having to design it, get it into the computer, making sure everything works out great, and then sitting for hours while, while it works and cuts. And That's something you've just recently right, started right. doing, right? Love and the technology and, and its use and its uh, applications in sculpture. I know you've uh, done some signs around campus mm -hmm. out of wood on the CNC as well, yes. correct? Mm -hmm. uh, it's just, it's, it's a lot of fun to, to see something you know, you put it, you got it in your head, you put it on paper, you take it, put it in a computer, and then it doesn't necessarily take the work out, but you can kind of sit back and relax and, and let it do its thing, so. All right, very interesting. Now, I know people can contact you and you can fix them up with whatever they're interested oh, absolutely. in, right? Yeah. And what's the best way to get a hold of you? Uh, easiest way is email. Okay. Uh, it's brent at opsu.edu. Okay, and do you have a Facebook page for your artwork? I do, but I don't keep up with it. it so it email is the best busy. way. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, thank you for your time. I know it's going to be a great evening, and we appreciate you oh, yeah. taking a moment out of all of your other duties to catch us up on all the history of the art auction. It's, it's going to be fun. Looking for a packed house. So. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you. Our next guest is AJ Ingo. He is the operations manager at the Meat Lab on campus, yeah. and we have a pretty cool story to share with y'all. AJ and I are both, we're fellow ag majors, and I wanted to share with the viewers how you got started into the art department. Okay. So we'll start at the very beginning, let you introduce yourself, how you found your way to Panhandle and that kind of thing. Okay. Um, Anthony Ingo, everybody calls me AJ. Um, I came to Panhandle in the fall of 2003. Um, started as an animal science major. Um, went on through school, got my animal science degree, and then went on and taught uh, ag in a small town in Colorado. After that, I came back to run the meat lab because uh, Darren asked if uh, I'd be interested in doing that. So I got back to Panhandle just as quick as I could, you know, and uh, started with the meat lab about 10 years ago. Um, I worked there as a student, but running it about 10 years now. Um, and then just recently, right about a year ago, I asked Brent if he would be willing to let me come into his class and take ceramics. I've always wanted to try it, and so I decided that this would that would be a good year to do it. Okay, so you got your animal science and ag business degrees yes, at Panhandle State. Yes, ma'am. And I read through your bio, you really brought out how you're an artist in the meat lab, which I thought was really <laughs> interesting and really neat. Yeah, you we're able to... Uh, to artfully craft smaller cuts of meat in the retail cuts from large carcasses. And so I feel like we do that every day, you know, busting down the carcasses into retail products for the consumer there at the OPSU Meat Lab. 
so you just kind of got it in your mind and thought this is an opportunity right exactly. there at my fingertips why not give it a shot and exactly check with, it out with uh, OPSU allowing you to take one semester one class a semester mm -hmm. as a staff faculty members um, I just thought it was such a great opportunity to do something that I could go and and spend some time and relax doing something that's completely different than that every day. And tell us how that works. Are you able to actually go and attend class during the regular work day? Yeah, luckily the both class, the, this is, I'm in ceramics three now, and um, it is a morning class. So I'm able, mornings at the meat lab are pretty, are pretty open. We don't have as mm -hmm. much volume coming mm -hmm. through in the in this morning as the afternoon. So I go in the morning on Monday and Wednesdays and take class and then, I uh, go back to the meat lab and, and have a normal and day after that. Stress free and yeah, ready, ready to go, to, right? Ready to have a great day. Okay, is ceramics the main um, medium that you've focused on then so far? Have you taken any other art classes? No, I haven't. I've uh, I never I took art appreciation as a student because mm -hmm. that was pretty much required right. and had no real thought. But I can tell you, if I would have done ceramics years ago, I might have a different major. Right. It's just. Uh, it's really interesting what you can do with your hands and what you're able to produce for people to use as, as products every day. Right. I can totally relate. We hate to admit that we've been out of college for a while. It yeah. doesn't really seem possible, to be right. honest. <laughs> but looking back now, I feel like we know even more of the things that we're interested in. Right. And so I'm glad that you're able to utilize the opportunities that are right there on campus. Yes, ma'am. It is, it is such a great opportunity for people to do that. Because actually, I got my animal, my ag business degree when I came back to work. So I was able to take those classes and get my ag business degree after I had got my animal science degree. So. Very neat. And something that I, as the campus communications director, have been getting to work on you, work with you as well, um, you've been doing some, some photography for yes. us. Do you want to tell us a little bit about that and then we'll talk about your piece? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, um, I got a drone. Uh, about two years ago now actually, and I finally got comfortable enough taking it up that we've been able to take some really neat pictures on campus. And uh, it's it's kind of neat. I, it's such a neat opportunity to go and get a different perspective on the campus, on people with such a high uh, vantage point. It's, it has been awesome. We've definitely been able to utilize your photos from staging a a, I guess a formation of our logo with freshman students this this past year to you getting photos of the the football field being yeah. torn out um, a really neat shot of the walking trail just yeah, that was like one of the first said. ones so that, it was really neat to have that and have so many people really appreciate and, and be able to see that so. It's really neat, yeah, to see that from that viewpoint, and I feel like marketing-wise, it's definitely something that's given us a boost. So I, <laughs> I think that must go hand in hand with you being more interested in the arts. I think so. Yeah, it, it, it does definitely helps bring everything together and, and have a different perspective than, than just your normal everyday right? things. Okay, so a huge honor for you to be selected yeah, to be it? in the art auction. Very Congratulations! Big honor. Thank you. Tell us about the piece that you have here. All right, this is um, what I named it was just red and black pit fire because I haven't quite learned all the, the ins and outs of creating such a great name for your art piece. But what we did was last semester during the homecoming, right. we had a pit fire and we went out and we dug a, um, we dug a pit at the, close to the practice field on campus. I'll pick it up so we can kind of look at it. And the way that it worked is we filled different layers of sawdust and different people's pieces. Everybody was able to do kind of however they wanted and, and look into some different options on how they wanted to prepare their piece for the pit fire mm -hmm. because it is such a random occurrence of how things are going to happen. So with this piece, I put on a coating of um, terra siglata. It is a white finish that you put on and you buff okay. it out. And then I put on a covering of ferric chloride, which is a corrosive uh, chemical. So then I wrapped it up in <laughs> tin foil. It's, uh -huh. it's such a process to do some of this stuff. And, and this whole time you're thinking, I don't, I don't know, know what's, what's going to happen. happen. Exactly. I don't may have not even any idea what's going to. It could honestly, break. Honestly, yeah, it, you may not may even break. have a piece it's, of artwork when it's so, done. Um, but it could be so awesome, it, and, and it, it is. It turned out very nice. Uh, put in some different coloring packets, and also use some horse hair on it, and you can kind of see where the horse hair mm -hmm. was right in there, and some in the inside also. But put it in the fire. We started the bonfire about nine o'clock in the evening, and it was a very large fire. It uh, just an inferno. 
I don't know the exact temperature we think it got up to, but it was able to melt metal. So it, it was pretty it hot. Pretty warm. Yeah. But um, which was super cool for a follow up to our homecoming pep rally. Yeah, exactly. Huge Lots bonfire. Of students. It <laughs> yeah. was so cool. Um, so I think it was around four in the morning that we started to remove a few pieces here and there out of the fire. Mm -hmm. uh, me and Brent, uh, um, Sandy, uh, Matt Carter, he, he was there to help. Uh, we, Sam, sorry, I don't want to forget Sam. He was there. I'm probably forgetting somebody else, but stayed all night for uh, to watch the fire and make sure everything was going well. Um, and then started pulling out pieces, piece by piece. They were still really hot. We couldn't really get to see what was going on. But then um, once the pieces cooled down, we got everything loaded up and we had a little art show at the tailgate, mm -hmm. which was really cool too. Mm -hmm. A lot of people liked what we had there. Which was and the next day following. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, yep. we right, rolled right into it. Um, had you slept at this point? Not, no, had not slept. Uh, Brent, I know, didn't sleep at all. I know a couple of people got a little nap here and there, but... It, but um, it was so cool you were running on adrenaline. Oh yeah, it was really cool. I can't wait to do another one, honestly. Um, but we went, and I was able to put a finish on it, and it really made the colors of the ferric chloride, the reds and the yellows pop, and got some good, good blacks in here. So I guess red is not an easy color to obtain, and so it's really nice to have, Very have nice. such a nice piece. Beautiful. Thank you. Now, if some of the viewers do want to contact you, whether it be meat lab questions, ceramics, whatever it is, is email the best way to contact yeah, you? Yeah, I think so. Um, or do you have an art Facebook page or anything I do not, at that I haven't point? started um, yet marketing any of my art yet. Okay. Um, I've been lucky enough to sell one other piece, so, you know, fingers crossed this does well tonight. But meatlab at opsu.edu uh, gets, gets right to me, it goes to my phone, and it's a great way to, to contact me. Okay. Um, Facebook would be Anthony Ingo. So if people are looking okay, for that. Okay, so either way will work. Yeah. All right, well, it's a beautiful piece. Congratulations. Thank you very much. A neat achievement. Yes, ma'am. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm pleased to introduce our next guest. She is the guest artist for the evening. This is Danielle Robinson. Danielle, it's great to have you. <laughs> Thanks. So it's great to be here. We've all been looking forward to seeing you. I know I actually got to go to college with you, so it's awesome to get to meet with you again and kind of talk about what you've been doing since, kind of catch up a little bit since I saw you last. So let's start for any of our viewers who don't know you. You want to just introduce yourself, tell us a little bit about where you're from and how you made your way to Panhandle State? Sure. Um, I played softball and I was recruited and so I came here on a scholarship uh, from California, Walnut, California, uh, which is in LA, and uh, culture shock a little bit. A little, little bit, bit different. <laughs> a little bit di different atmosphere, but uh, I fell in love with it. Uh, I graduated in 2004 with a uh, psychology degree, and then in 2006 I decided to take into the arts, kind of, so. And that's how I kind of became into this situation. So you were pretty busy as a student. Not only did you, I'm, I know with just your artwork, you stayed busy in the art department, but you also were on the softball team, cross Soft country team. <laughs> were you a member of the Images Art <laughs> Club as well? Yeah. I know in one of the press releases we sent out, we talked a little bit about your pranksterisms. Yeah, it was, it's really been funny kind of learning about all of those because, you know, it's been some time, so I've slept since then and I don't remember them but, all. But know, some, some of them and being informed of them again and I'm like, you know, sometimes I was a little bit embarrassed, like, oh wow, did I really do that? Are you sure? <laughs> that wasn't me. <laughs> that wasn't me. I don't know. I think if someone could have pinned it on me, you know. But. It sounds like you've even had a few reminders already today, Day, people today. trying to pre yep. play a few pranks back on you. Yeah, Samantha's made some visits, yeah. So. so during your time at Panhandle State, was there a highlight just probably being a part of the art department? Absolutely. Uh, being a part of the department, everyone's families and they had Critter Fest and uh, I didn't really eat that kind of stuff, but it was <laughs> interesting really fun and interesting and to be a part of it and uh, just, you know, uh, making a lot of work and great group of friends that I, you know, still talk to today. And uh, but yeah, it, it was a great experience. And you know, I didn't know that I was going to be an artist. It was really weird. I thought I was going to do art therapy, and I didn't really work out. And then somehow I ended up at Fort Hay State, and the rest is history. Pretty much okay. here we are. <laughs> so talk a little bit about where you're at right now at Fort Hayes and what you're doing there. Um, at Fort Hayes I am an adjunct uh, instructor 
And so uh, I teach basic design for them currently. Um, sometimes I teach sculpture, but it just depends on um, where I'm needed, really. And then uh, outside of that, I make a lot of work. And currently, uh, Toby Flores and I have a commission to make a 12-foot tornado. Cool. out of steel so that should be fun awesome you mentioned a little bit about how you got started you said you never really thought art was going to be the way no you went. i don't i kind of fell into it i think i took an art appreciation course and uh brent might have been the instructor mm -hmm. and he kind of just kept pushing me and then uh he was a really cool instructor to work with and uh, encouraging and so i kind of just fell into it because he was a good instructor you know and then uh, just somehow blossomed into what this is today. Yeah, his passion for it's kind of contagious, isn't <laughs> yeah, it? Pretty much. Well, you have a number of pieces here on display. Is all of this for sale tonight uh, at the yep. art auction? Okay, let's just take a step over and you can kind of walk us down the line and show us what all you brought and tell us a little bit about it if that works. Sure, sure. Um, so these forms are uh, just cast iron with steel and they're kind of about like drought. Everything that I do is kind of about drought, um, which was funny because back in the day it was always about water uh, when I was currently here, but it was like a lot of my upbringing of California and the ocean, so everything was very, and then I've lived here now, mm -hmm. uh, or in Hayes, uh, since I left, and so now everything is very dry. Kind of taken and, on that. Yeah. So it's all about kind of dry or uh, maybe possibilities and then like piles, which are like rising seas. And so a little bit of, you know, environmental properties, but okay. yeah. All right, where should we go next? You have so much. <laughs> uh, Wanna uh, move to this, this one? Sure. Uh, so this piece here is the piece for the auction actually. Okay. Um, and it's the same thing. It's, I enjoy taking the industrial fields, but it's all very like geographical and topographical maps. And so you made the base that it's on as mm -hmm. well as the other part too. Yeah. yeah. So just fabricated steel. Um, just adds another element to the work. Is that something that you took when you were in classes here at Panhandle State or is that something you picked up since you left? Since I've left. Very yeah. neat. I was pretty much two-dimensional when I left, so. So this is the actual piece that'll sell tonight in the art auction. Yes. Everything is for sale, but this one will be actually yes. auctioned off. Okay, and then this piece right here. Mm -hmm. uh, so that one there, it's uh, just another like kind of landform, but on, uh, again, with the metal mm -hmm. uh, steel fabricating and it's got resin in there for like water and I carved out and set the castings down in the long Yeah, it's really awesome when you actually get to take yeah, a step yeah. up on it and, <laughs> and check it out. All right, and then another piece back here. Oh uh, yeah, that was just a found little piece of uh, cast iron, like a splash that maybe while we were pouring happened and recurred and it was just cute. So um, I kept put it, cast it in resin and uh, made a little frame. Perfect. <laughs> and then we'll move over to that other piece on the wall. Yeah. Um, I really enjoy pulleys and so I have a lot of pulleys in um, some of my other work as well that isn't here. And so uh, I just like the industrial feel of the pulleys and then it goes well with the cast iron and rock elements. So. Okay, and then maybe moving right here to the middle. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Which these are absolutely gorgeous when you get to take a look <laughs> from right here. Yeah, uh, so you can see through them and they're just, uh, again, the landforms, topographical impressions, and then you could see through a few of them and just I like the textures of land and rust. I really enjoy rust. <laughs> I'm not an artist at all. Can you give us a brief, brief background on how you go about making these? Uh, sure. So this I just started with like foam, like craft foam, uh -huh. and made it and layered it. So that's how you got the layers to make the topographicalness. And then uh, I cast, I made a resin bond and sand mold and then pulled the foam out basically. Mm -hmm and then poured metal into that pattern. And then cleaned them up, not very much cleanup, and then uh, this resin is just mixing resin, two-part resin. So it sounds so easy when you it describe so, it. Yeah, yeah. It's a lot it can longer be. than that. Yes. Yeah. 
Beautiful. All right, and back here, we'll move over so we can take a better look at those. Um, so again, it's kind of the land formations um, to me, and it's you can see and it moves around. You can view it and it has really nice negative spaces that I enjoy. But um, so it's just land forms. Okay. And then this piece here. Uh, this piece, uh, this actual piece here, was a present from Toby. Uh, he brought it back from Crusted Butte, and it was a piece of foam initially. So I rammed it with sand, and then pulled it out and made it. And then this is what the foam looked like beforehand. And I just mounted it to some limestone because I thought it went. And then uh, it's called Bird and Iron because it was kind of like the bird in space. After I got put it together, it really had that feeling of Rancusi. So. so do you have a shop where you are able to work on this? Uh, Fort Hayes State University. <laughs> That's where you do a lot of yours just right there on campus. Yep. Okay, and then what else? Have oh. we missed anything? Do we have another piece up there? Yeah, there's as well? that. I don't think I want that one. That was a joke. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, you can do however you want to do that one. <laughs> yeah. And so this is uh, this material was actually waxed initially um, and dropped into water. So that's kind of why it has this that look on the back. Yeah. And then in the front, it's. Just a different, that's like water splash into the wax. Mm -hmm. And then the other piece over there. Um, yeah. uh, so this is just a little casting. It was again waxed. Um, it's resin and rust. And, uh, so all of these kind of have a similar, a similar inspiration. Mm -hmm. and it's all environmental and land forms. Is that predominantly, I mean, you kind of mentioned that you're, you are doing a lot of work that is along those lines. Is mm -hmm. that predominantly your inspiration for everything that you do? For the most part, unless I have a commission or something of that nature. But it's kind of fun then because it gets, you know, pushed out of your comfort zone or your box. And mm -hmm. you have to, you know, make uh, other ideas and things that you're not normally used to making. So it's kind of fun coming up with something. So what was your thought when they contacted you and told you, you or asked you? Honored. <laughs> yes, of course. That's awesome. Yeah, I was really honored. So it was, uh, you know, I had, <clears throat> David Elder had just come up. And so I just saw him, I think the very next day, like Brian Test, you know, was like, hey, you want to text me? And then, of course, sent that picture to me <laughs> as a joke. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it was really honoring and, you know, even the little write-up that they wrote about me, which, of course, had a lot of pranks written in there, but, uh, you know, it was just, everything is just so touching and, you know, it's like family and I've been away for way too long. I should come back more. <laughs> We're definitely glad to have you back. And I know Brent referenced when we talked to him earlier that y'all had spoken and you probably have some kind of projects in mind that maybe you guys will get to work on Absolutely, in the future. yeah, I think we are, yeah. It's Very gonna neat. be good, yeah. I think we're gonna get bring some casting to Panhandle, so. Awesome. If a viewer wants to get a hold of you, if they're interested in your work, if they want to see about commissioning a piece from you, what's the best way to contact you? Um, I have a business card that I just okay. do that. Or you can take a picture of it. Yeah, yeah, we can just show it up on the screen for them. Well, we appreciate your time. Enjoy your evening, Thank your you. mini reunion. I right? know, right? <laughs> it's I'm great super to stoked. see you. Yeah, We're so proud of everything that you're Thank doing. You. Thank you. Our next guest is a junior at Panhandle State. Sam, it's great to have you. Thank you, great to have you guys. I'll let you go ahead and introduce yourself to our viewers. Okay, my name is Sam Ortiz and I am from Mexico. I am first generation college student and I'm at Panhandle State University. Very awesome, you've done such a great job. We're so proud of you. Thank you. You're showing two pieces tonight for yes. sale at the auction. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about yourself as an artist. How did you get started? When did you first know you were interested in art? Uh, when I got into the college, the first thing I wanted to do was architecture, but there was no a career at OPSU. So Larry Wiggins actually saw me in a um, in a clay class, a ceramics one class, mm -hmm. and where, that's where he got me into Penn State University. And then since there, it's been four years already. 
So did you go to high school around somewhere close in the area? Here in Gaiman. In Gaiman? Yeah. And that's where you met Larry, and yeah. then that's how you found your way to Panhandle State? Yeah, yeah, that's it. And tell us a little bit about where you get your inspiration as an artist, or what medium you like to work in. Uh, my favorite medium is uh, clay and ceramics, and that's why I, I try to bring my culture into this uh, part of the country, which it's, uh, it's a little bit off in art, so I want to bring what I, what I know from where I am, which is my culture. Very cool. Let's take a look at your piece right here. Tell us a little bit about it. Okay, this one, this one, it's uh, called corn, mm -hmm. uh, and it it has the texture of a corn, of a uh, corn mm -hmm. cup yes. rolled onto Beautiful. the slabs, and the the glaze, it's a tamaco glaze, which uh, makes the texture pops really good. Mm -hmm. And it was the assignment was uh, to bring something out of nature, to use something of nature. So my first my first instinct was, okay, I can use corn mm -hmm. since it's something that I I know pretty well, and it was pretty good. I, it came out pretty good. Um, how long would a, some work like this take? Can you give an estimate um, of how much time you may have spent? To make it, it will be probably like two to three weeks because uh, you had to let it uh, dry. You had to let it dry and you had to glaze it and mist fire several times. Mm -hmm. So it takes quite a bit of time. It turned out gorgeous, Thank very you. beautiful. Do you want to tell us about this piece while we're here? Uh, this is another media, it's pastel. Uh, it's something that I've been trying. Last year was the first time I did it and it's uh, it's called uh, Welcome Spring. It's a uh, it's the break of the rules of making every leaf a show in the piece because you never want to make every leaf comes out. And on this one, I break the rule. I was trying to break the rule. So uh, it's a, a new medium that I've been trying pastels. What, during your three, that you've been taking classes for four years at Panhandle yes. State? Mm -hmm. And you, throughout that time, you have figured out that clay is your favorite medium. Yes. I, that's what, that was the first, uh, step of the first class that I took for ceramics classes. And what other mediums have you worked in then? Pretty much I'm everywhere in the department. I've done acrylic, watercolor, sculptures. So I'm, I'm trying everybody to see everything to see what I like the most. Well, you're getting close to graduation. Yes. What are your future plans? Uh, I would like to become a teacher, but also I would like to have my own shop where I can become artists and sell my pieces. Have you done any, I know you were in the art marketing class where they learn how to market their yes. pieces and set up this Put event. Put in action right here. Yes. So have you started doing some of that now with your artwork? Are you displaying in galleries or uh, anything like that yet? Just a very little, um, downtown Gamerly, really uh -huh. all fire up. Okay. That's where pretty much every artist at Panhandle State University starts. Right. So that give us a little feedback on yes. how the real world is going to become. It's neat that you have that opportunity so close so you can yes. kind of get a feel, a hands-on practical application. Yeah, that's super great. Let's talk about your experience as a student in the art department. It sounds like you've really enjoyed it. Do you have any highlights that you'd like to mention? Anything that really stands out to you that's been one of your favorite things about being a part of the department? Well, all, their, all the teachers are great and they really give them they give it to you, they're 100%, and that's what they like. And um, what I like that um, they don't try to make their own artwork, but they teach you how to do work so you can come out to the real world and then uh, showcase your art. So it's you doing what, yes. what you're inspired to do. They give you do. to have freedom. That's awesome. And they help you probably discover what it is that you're passionate yes. about. Where do you find a lot of your inspiration, predominantly from? Uh, my Mexican culture. Like you said, that's yes. really neat. If, an, if a viewer is interested in contacting with you, maybe working with you on getting a piece of artwork, what's the best way to get a hold of you? Uh, you can, uh, they can find me on Facebook at Sam Ortiz Art. Okay. And um, they can also call to phone, it's 580-754-5193. Okay. If they want uh, um, a specific pieces to be made into their exact regulations. All right, well, we appreciate your time. I know it's a very busy, busy Thank evening. Thank you guys for being here. And congratulations on getting two pieces into the auction. That's Thank very you. impressive. Yeah. You've done Thank a great job. Guys. Thank you. Thank you. Our next guest is an alumni, Shay Meyer. It's nice to have you. Thank you for having me. 
we're glad that you could come back for the art auction. What? Yeah. How many of them have you been to? Oh, I don't know. I, I think the first one was when we were in the Methodist Church uh, gymnasium. I don't even know what year that was, but I it's been a while. I think Brian, when I talked earlier about with him about the history, that may have been the very first one. Does that seem like it could be right? I or think, that's I think it, it was the second at? one, maybe. Maybe not the first. So you've been to, each year you, if you're able to, you like to come back? Yeah, if I am. Uh, there's been some years I've missed, but I try to come when I can. Okay, tell us a little bit about what you did while you were at Panhandle State. Um, I just, I came from Guyman, Oklahoma, got an art scholarship at Panhandle State, and uh, just took fine arts and uh, learned a lot about uh, painting that I hadn't done a whole lot previously. I did a lot with drawing and color pencils and then I learned a lot about painting which is mostly what I do now. Uh, I'm also a uh, art teacher at Stratford, Oklahoma and uh, uh, won the Oklahoma Duck Stamp in 2014. Uh, still working on getting better and better and uh, mostly western wildlife art and mostly painting. So where, do you, where does your passion come from, from for what you do? Uh, I was raised around horses uh, in the country and uh, I'm an outdoorsman and so I love the outdoors, I love horses and cows and the farm and, and hunting and just the beauty of what God's created outside and, and honestly I mean I don't think any of us as artists can come close to what God does but it's, it's fun to try. So. Yep, some pretty awesome sunsets and sunrises and yeah. everything in between. Tell us a little bit about the art you have on display that we'll be selling tonight. This, this is uh, acrylic paint on canvas and it's called Slide. And it's a performance horse that would be sliding to a stop. And I love this uh, picture because of the lighting. and the, I really like the lighting that was going on with the, the dust coming up in front of it. And so it was something I was attracted to and I wanted to paint. And if our viewers are interested in touching base with you, getting a hold of you, getting a piece of artwork done, is that something they can contact oh, yeah. you and do? I do a lot of commission work. Okay, and what is the best way to reach you? Um, I've got, I mean, you can reach me on Facebook, message me. Um, I've got a Facebook art page. Okay. Uh, also, uh, I can even give you my phone number and they can contact me through that. It doesn't really matter. Uh, my phone number is 580-341-9562 if they want to call me and, and give me to do something. Okay. How were you able to incorporate what you learned at Panhandle State into what you do now with teaching your students? Um, I got a really well-rounded education with art at Panhandle, so, so I can teach, I feel like, anything really from drawing to painting, watercolor to um, ceramics. We did, I mean, we do everything at, in my classroom. And so I feel really prepared for what I have to do in order to educate other kids. And uh, I think that's a huge benefit to what I got in my education was panhandling. Are you able to, like, do those students enter contests? Are you able to mm -hmm. take them to? Yeah, uh, we have contests locally. Uh, we've, we've got a show that's put on by the Chickasaw Nation in Ada, Oklahoma, every year in the spring. And we, we always show very, very well there. We've, we've had several uh, grand team, like the best of show winners and first place winners. And, and so we've showed really well locally. Uh, and I've even had some students, uh, I have uh, two students, in fact, win the state d junior duck stamp. Oh, wow. The, so that was really neat. And I know in 2014 when you won, I got to talk to you on the phone, so it's nice to actually get to meet yeah. you. Are you able to do some artwork while you're teaching? A little. Uh, I know my my time in class, I need to make sure I can help kids, and so I, even if I'm working on something, I always want to be able to stop and, and help them if they need it. Uh, and then other times I do try to work a little bit here and there on some work in front of them. That way they can see the process of you know, when I'm starting something and how, how that whole process unfolds and they can see it done to you completion. You putting into practice what and then, you're teaching. And then they can see me sell it. So that's also something that's motivational for them. Yep. And we 
talked about that with Brian and Brent and some of the students even, how this is such a learning experience. Not only is it a great honor to have your work chosen to be sold, but you actually see, you know, you do it in the classroom mm -hmm. and then you go out and you market it and you mm -hmm. see it until it's completely sold. So it's a really great experience. Yeah. Well, we appreciate your time tonight. We're glad to have you back again. Right, glad thank it you. for you to come and we look forward to many more of these awesome yeah. events. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Thank you for joining us at the 18th Annual Paul Farrell Memorial Art Auction. I'd like to take a second to thank our featured guest, Danielle Robinson, as well as instructors Brian Test and Brent Shoulders, and all of our other guests that we got to speak to tonight. And that's what's happening.